The question on the minds of political observers tonight is whether today's development will bring the Democrats together or further divide them. It's unclear at this point what the nomination process will look like or when it will happen. WRL Capitol Bureau Chief Laura Leslie joins us live in studio with a look at whether Democrats are likely to unite behind this. Vice President Harris. Julian, today's announcement throws the nominating process into question. It'll be up to Democratic delegates to decide who it'll be. And at the moment, we don't even know who else might be angling for consideration. Biden's endorsement today gives Harris a strong boost, but it's not a slam dunk. At a fundraiser in Raleigh last night, state Democrats like Congresswoman Deborah Ross said the party will come together behind whoever the nominee is. I'm a yellow dog Democrat. I'd vote for a yellow dog over a junkyard dog any day. This is not about Biden. This is about Please saving our democracy. After President Joe Biden dropped out today and endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris, Ross praised Biden's decision and said, the path forward is clear. We must unite behind Vice President Kamala Harris. Many other elected leaders like former President Barack Obama and Governor Roy Cooper also praised Biden's decision, but stopped short of endorsing Harris. DNC Chairman Jamie Harrison said, the party will undertake a transparent and orderly process to move forward with a candidate who can defeat Donald Trump in November. Biden's endorsement will carry weight with delegates who were pledged to him, which is the majority of them. But that's not a slam dunk. They can choose to support someone else. My intention is to earn and win this nomination, Harris said in a statement. Still, Catawba College political scientist Michael Bitzer believes the Democrats will nominate Harris, especially after Biden's endorsement. Black women voters are the most reliable base the party has. If you bypass the first African-American woman to potentially head a ticket, you are going to have to deal with a core base of the Democratic Party and the potential retribution that that could bring as well. Across it could depend on how and when the nominating process takes place. It usually happens at the convention, but the DNC doesn't even start until August 19th, and some party leaders say that's too long to wait for certainty. They're pushing to hold a so-called virtual nomination vote in early August. Julian? Oh, Laura, so many questions out there. Thank you so much. Well, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper responding to Biden's announcement in a statement saying in part, quote, President Biden has seen in his place among our nation's finest presidents. I'm deeply grateful to call President Joe Biden my friend, and I thank him for the bottom, from the bottom of my heart for his service to our great nation. Cooper is facing a lot of the national attention right now after two people close to the Biden-Harris campaign said he would be a contender to join the Harris ticket if she became the Democratic nominee. WRL's Carly Haynes is live outside the governor's mansion with more details on Cooper's chances. Carly. Well, Julian, the man through these doors is on a short list of possible vice presidential candidates, mainly from swing states. But unlike some of those other candidates, Governor Roy Cooper is coming to the end of his term, which could free him up just in time. North Carolina could be represented on the presidential ticket. WREL state government reporter Paul Spey says if Kamala Harris is selected as the presidential nominee, there's a real chance Governor Roy Cooper could be her running mate. We first started seeing reports about a couple weeks ago when, you know, pressure was mounting on President Biden to drop out. The logic boils down to a few reasons. For one, he's a Democrat proven to win in a right-leaning battleground state. That could pull more people in North Carolina and conservatives across the country. Trump only won North Carolina by about one percentage point back in 2020. Uh, and Cooper won that very same year. So he sort of pulled this magic trick of uh, being able to win at the same time as Republicans. And he's been doing that throughout his career. And so uh, that's one thing that might make him appealing to the Democrats is, you know, being able to win over some conservatives or some swing voters. Space says Cooper has also made it through his political career without major say. scandals, making him a safer pick, a familiar face that could build inroads across the aisle. WRAL did reach out to Cooper's team today. We haven't heard back, but so far, Cooper has avoided talking about this, choosing instead to voice his support for President Joe Biden. Carly Haynes, WRAL News, live in Raleigh.
For more on Governor Roy Cooper's prospects as a Democratic running mate, go to our in-depth story at NC Capital section of WRL.com. You'll also find a link to a special episode of the WRL Daily Download, breaking down Cooper's chances. Well, other politicians are also reacting to President Biden's decision to drop out tonight. Senator Ted Budd said in part the Democratic Party tried and failed to cover up President Biden's cognitive decline, but they cannot cover up the record high inflation, open borders and international chaos created by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. North Carolina Democratic candidate for governor and state attorney general Josh Stein said, quote, President Biden is a true patriot. His decision today exemplifies his commitment to always put his country before himself. I thank him for his remarkable service to our nation. Republican candidate Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson has not commented at this time. House Speaker Mike Johnson is one of the politicians calling for Biden to step down from his role as president as well. He said in a statement, quote, if Joe Biden is not fit to run for president, he is not fit to serve as president. He must resign the office immediately.